Good morning, final review of the Falcon Wild Peak Overlanding Package on the Model X Plaid. Let me give you a good review on how this worked out for us. Did it work? Uh, I have a thousand miles right now on the Falcon Wild Peak with what T-Sport Line is calling the Overland Package. It ain't an Overland Package, guys. It's simply 19-inch wheels on some Falcon Wild Peak uh, AT tires, the trail version of the Wild Peak Trails. Let's talk about how they work. Let's talk about how we use them. Let's talk about why we use them. Let's talk about how they work on a Model X. Pros and cons, blah, 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 blah. We can repair them in real time to these Pirelli Scorpion all-terrains on the 4x4 square. We can obviously compare them to the wheels on the factory, Model Y, performance, junk, trash, whatever. But let's talk about, for real, how they work. All right, so we drive this car every day. This is our daily beat-up uh, car, the Model X Plaid. Phenomenal platform, guys. We love these things. Why do we have the Falcon Wild Peak tires? Because we live in the middle of nowhere. So even though, yes, we're driving a Tesla, for us, it's almost eight miles of dirt road a day just to get to hardball. So for us, again, hypercritical, we have snow, mud, loose gravel, eight miles of dirt road a day just to get to uh, where we have to go. But we don't mind, everything is off grid, everything's being powered. So let's talk about the biggest differences between these tires and the factory tires while we take a little road trip this morning. So I really want you guys to see the slop that we drive through every single day. This isn't just a little bit of mud. We drive through slop, okay? So when you're going through slop, I'm telling you, these Falcon Wild Peak trails, they can really change the dynamic of the Tesla Model X Plaid. All right, to start this off, let's really talk about what we're dealing with with these Falcon Wild Peak tires from T-Sport Line on the T-Sport Line wheels, blah, blah, blah. Okay, when I swap these out, I've put 947 miles on them. I bought this car with two miles on it from Tesla. It's now at almost 42,000 miles. I've had a mix of the factory 22s. Then I went to Martian wheel 20s on a all weather tire, but much more efficient than these. Now we're on a 19 inch tire on the Falcon Wild Peak Trail. So my average use over 42,000 miles, that's good guys. Like that's actually good. Now, Everybody would think these mud tires basically means you no longer are efficient. But again, is that great? No. Is that bad? No. Is it something to really think about and say, hey, listen, we are driving in a cold time of the year in Virginia. We've had multiple snowstorms on these tires. So when you see 947 miles, that's 947 miles of two snowstorms, a minimum of eight miles of dirt road, nasty road a day mountains as I'm commuting, highway, shopping centers, blah, blah, blah. All right, guys, so we are turning on our beautiful road. And again, it's eight miles of this a day, eight miles of hill, mud, gravel, slop. The second it rains, it's nasty. You can slide, get stuck, blah, blah, blah. So these tires, do I recommend them? Well, it all depends. So let's talk about the obvious comfort. I mean, guys, that, that part's hard to even compare. When you go from a large rim, low pro tire to a small rim, fat sidewall tire, I mean, it just gets 100 times more comfortable. So compared to the factory 22s, my God, this changes the dynamic of the vehicle tremendously. Vastly more comfortable, vastly more capable out here where we're at right now, not even comparable. You cannot compare a track rated summer tire to a Falcon Wild Peak Trail. I mean, you just can't compare it, right? And we also can't compare it in these environments. Um, it, it's just, again, vastly superior. Now, if we're doing like a road course, high-speed driving, you know, on a closed track, then obviously a summer uh, tire is going to be vastly superior. However, it's not my lifestyle. It's not my life. I've never been on a track with a Tesla, nor would I waste time doing it. It's not a track car. So, with the Falcon Wild Peaks, it's still a straight line assassin. Even with these tires, it'll it'll straight up embarrass 99.9% .9 of cars. However, with these tires, we're opening up all kinds of possibilities for driving. Turned off our side dirt road onto the main dirt road. So, if you live in the country, if you live out on some dirt roads, you live out on some fire roads, logging roads, cabin roads, gravel roads, whatever the hell you want to call it, a lot of times you're going to be a little bit like, I don't know about a Tesla, man. Like, I don't know. Like, 
I need hardcore four wheel drive. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. I have them, I love them, there's no comparison. But in reality, you don't, right? In reality, you're driving a two wheel drive in a truck 99% of the time. And in all wheel drive vehicles, I mean, my guy, like most all wheel drive vehicles now are you know, heavily biased towards the front of the back. They're not even true all wheel drive cars. So how's the Tesla on that? Tesla is true all wheel drive, literally the most advanced all wheel drive system ever created. You don't see a lot of videos of Teslas getting stuck, period, as in ever, right? Which is why when you do see a Tesla stuck, it's like some massive video. See, Tesla can't do it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of videos of Jeeps that are stuck in basic sand, right? Anyway, my point is, as long as ground clearance is not an issue and you're not trying to do something stupid like rock crawl, this is an almost 6,000 pound uh, car, very, very heavy, that'd be dumb. But as far as snow, mud, sand, dirt, anything that doesn't require rock crawling, I would put the all-wheel drive system of a base, basic Tesla, Model 3, against like many other high-end four-wheel drive cars, as, again, as long as ground clearance is not an issue. For the Tesla Model X, you can obviously bump the suspension uh, dramatically up, so you can give yourself almost a foot of ground clearance at slow speeds. But again, this is not a rock crawl. It's not an off-roader. You're not going to go you know, lumbering up a, a single track trail in the forest. That would be absolutely stupid in a Tesla. However, back here on the dirt, man, like they're almost unstoppable as long as you put the right rubber on them. AKA, end of the conversation, Tesla, or Tesla, Falcon Wild Peaks. We are off my secondary dirt road onto the hardball. This is a fancy road, <laughs> but uh, most of you guys think this is still a bad road, but it's pretty fancy. So, how do the Wild Peaks handle on dirt, mud, snow? They are phenomenal. They take this car to a whole different level. They take this car to an entirely different capability conversation. It is amazing. However, you know, you drive on a hardball 90% of the time if you're a normal person. So how do they perform in the hardball? Well, it's an interesting mix, right? So factory tires on the 22s, loud, obnoxious, bumpy, rash, rough, they suck, right? The second you put these on, you notice something right off the bat. Now, I swapped mine out for 20s right off the bat just for speed and efficiency. But now, once you put these on, immediately you notice how much quieter the ride is, how much smoother the ride is, how much more composed the ride is. And when you look at the efficiency numbers, we're only a little bit more than the smaller 20s. So I can guarantee I would put a decent amount of money that factory 22s are less efficient than these all-terrain Falcon Wild Peaks. Sounds crazy, but but now seeing is truly believing. So again, if we look at the combined uses here, right, and we say 336 watt miles over the course of basically 42,000 miles, but that's not really the whole story for this mileage here. What do I mean by that? I mean that the factory wheels were on here for approximately 10,000 miles. As soon as I swapped those out, I put the uh, 20s on for 30,000 miles, so that's a mix. But then I've had this car for almost two years. There's 40,000 miles on it. So that, that mileage right there is a mix of summertime, pure winter, Michigan, cross country, you name it. So the fact that we are 1,000 miles into these Falcon Wild Peaks in the winter and we're averaging 359 over basically 1,000 miles, guys, that ain't bad at all. And now we climb. So now we're off the secondary hardball onto the highway. And now we got to climb some serious hills, going up some serious mountains, burning all kinds of electrons. But when we hit the top of this, we're going to come down to backside and we're going to get most of them back. So anyway, um, so how does these tie, how does these, how do these tires stack up on the hardball? Man, zero complaints, but I don't aggressively drive this car. So yes, it's a plaid. Yes, I have fun. It's the purpose of driving a plaid straight line stuff here and there i'll mash it but i'm very cautious um as far as daily driving cross country trips virginia to florida virginia to michigan virginia to colorado i've done all those i drive pretty conservative so as far as how these tires do on the hardball honestly i think they're superior wet traction obviously superior ice and snow traction so all in all super happy super super confident with them i don't have these tesla uh specific overland rims from t sport line and the falcon wild peak tires because i think i'm going to overland my tesla that's silly uh i would i would never do that 
I have real off-road vehicles for that. However, it's the perfect solution for what I needed. So I needed something with a lot more sidewall. I needed something with lighter wheels. I needed something that I could reliably run up and down dirt roads every day, all day, which I was doing on factory Tesla wheels, but it wasn't enjoyable. Every bump, every divot, every rock, you'd feel it. So T-Sport line, Overland package for the Model X, Falcon Wild Peak Trail tires. Pretty legit, uh, for real, pretty legit. You live back in the woods, you live back in the country, you have a Tesla and man, you got some steep hills, some logging roads, some loose, nasty slop roads. Tesla with the right tires to get you up and down it with zero drama. Just a little catch up here as we are coming through the Rants in Charlestown area of West Virginia, heading up to Martinsburg. But when you're going on a normal drive, I want you to look at that 23 miles. That's when we unplugged and left my house. 23 miles, we're averaging 313 watt miles. Guys, we're on all terrain tires. That's really good. There's people that are on factory 22s can't even touch that in a Model X. So yes, I would say 20s are probably the, the, the perfect size for the most efficient travel or 19s on some uh, low pros, but 19 inch all terrains are giving me almost the exact same, if not better efficiency than the factory 22 inch wheels. Figure that one out for a second. All right, guys, we have arrived at the Martinsburg VA, and I really wanted to show this, man. This sunlight's going to be battling me right now. I know it's bad. 39 miles on this commute and an average of 296 watt miles. Guys, Tesla Model X Plaid on Falcon Wild Peak Trail tires, 40 miles, and we're pulling literally Model 3, Model Y numbers. It's not about uh, the tires, guys, it's about how you drive. And again, this trip was a mix of 65, 55, 45, uphill, downhill, burn energy, recoup energy, heated seats, heater, blah, 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 blah. I got to find somewhere to park and this parking lot is always tight. It's okay. But uh, anyway, so efficient, uh, that ain't bad. 